Hey, I'm Jim Bridger Harney, and this is my channel where I help people learn more about backpacking, particularly backpacking in the Sierra. So it is July 11th, 2021 now, and I went on a 22 mile hike just north of Yosemite last weekend, where I got a good idea of what the current conditions are like. We're gonna combine that with a little bit of satellite recon from Caltopo to give you a good picture of what's going on on the JMT in terms of bugs and snow and river flows and all that stuff. So if you're worried about what the conditions are gonna be like, this will help assuage any of your fears years we're doing all right this year if you like this sort of content and want more of it let me know by uh, liking sharing subscribing all that stuff and with that let's jump right into the bugs so mosquitoes in the sierra are particularly bad for a little window after the snow melts but before all the fish become really active and all the birds and whatever the heck else go after the mosquitoes and uh, get them under control there's usually a big flush of them and then it drops down to a more moderate level that's a bit more reasonable at this point in the season mosquitoes are at at that peak suck factor between about 7,500 feet and 8,500 feet. And this range is gonna increase by 500 to 1,000 feet each week until we hit 10,500. When you get to that elevation, bugs aren't really gonna be that much of an issue anymore. But at that point, you're gonna be dealing with really cold nights and you're usually gonna be in a fairly exposed situation. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. If weather is good, it might be worth it to sleep at higher elevations just to avoid the bugs. But I would say that it's always a good idea to be prepared to deal with bugs in the Sierra just because it can happen and it sucks. If you are planning to be in the Sierra and you're gonna be between 7,500 and 10,500 feet, which is gonna be pretty much anyone who's hiking the JMT for most of the time they're out there, I suggest if you're gonna be out there in the next month, month and a half, make sure that you're wearing permethrin treated clothes. You're carrying 30 or more percent DEET or Picardin based bug repellent. Those are the two that have been shown to work in studies. You carry a head net and you avoid camping near water. If you do those things, you're probably not gonna to have too many issues with bugs and uh, uh, that's about it. Now, if you're really opposed to bug repellents, you can push it and sleep at higher elevations, but remember, it's gonna be very cold at night. So you're gonna be, need to be prepared for temperatures that are hitting, say, 20 to 35 degrees in the middle of the night. And regardless of everything that I've said in terms of elevation, there are some areas on the trail that I can tell you tend to have bugs all the time, and sometimes they're particularly bad. One that always comes to mind is Wallace Creek. I will tend to avoid Wallace Creek like the plague. I'd rather camp a mile before or a mile after than camp anywhere near that area because it just always has bugs but they do have bear boxes so you might have to make a trade-off there regardless as i said it's always a good idea to have your bug protection and to treat your clothes with permethrin so just use that as a starting point and go from there all right snow so snow in the sierra this year is relatively low but even in low snow years we tend to see snow patches persist on the north side of passes into early july now when you're crossing snow always be aware of your fall line keep track of what you will slide into and manage how careful you are according to that because if there are higher consequences for slipping you need to be extra sure you're not going to slip i guess the moral of the story is just don't slip right anyway at this point the remaining snowpack is low enough that we're going to be clear of snow by the time most people start getting out there in the late july to uh september time frame pretty normal stuff but we'll give you a look at all the passes just the same all right so on a pass by pass basis headed north to south cathedral pass is free of snow donahue pass is a couple patches of snow on either side of the peak but you'll probably be on snow for less than 100 feet. I expect Donahue will be free of snow by early July, maybe even sooner. Island Pass is free of snow at this point, so is Silver Pass and Selden Pass. Muir Pass has patchy snow all the way from Lake McDermott to Helen Lake. This shouldn't be a surprise if you're familiar with the area because Muir Pass tends to hold on to snow later than most of the other passes, but you should still expect about a mile and a half of patchy snow travel in that area with most of that clearing up by July 1st, but a few remnants will probably hold on into early July. Mather Pass has patchy snow on the northern exposure but will likely be free of snow by late June since it's already mostly there and Pincho has very limited snow even now and will likely be free of snow by late June. Glen Pass has a sort of medium-sized patch of snow on the northern side of the pass. You'll probably be on snow for a few hundred yards as you get towards the top of the pass. And then there are, there's other snow in the area, but for the most part, you're gonna be hiking around it and not through it. Forrester Pass is kind of a similar story, has a bit larger of a patch of snow, and it's gonna be uh, covering that last section of switchbacks as you climb up the scarp to the top of the pass on the northern side. But I expect both Glen and Forrester Passes to be essentially free of snow by mid-July with only a small patch holding on into early July. Last but not least, Mount Whitney and Trailcrest are already essentially free of snow. The upside of that is that you don't have to deal with slogging through snow, especially in the areas where it can be a little bit more sketchy up near the top. But the downside is the chute is clear of snow. So no glissading past the 100 switchback 
contracts, you're gonna have to trade one slog for another. All right, so that covers snow. Now, due to the low snow levels that we were just talking about and the advanced state of the melt, I don't think creek crossings are gonna be too big of an issue unless you're going through the creek before early July, because at that point, everything should be melted and the flows should be much lower. But if you have shorter people in your group before then, you may be dealing with some higher flows. So let's walk through the deeper and or swifter or otherwise more complicated crossings, as well as the alternate routes that you might take for those. All right, so the first crossing is Minaret Creek. Minaret Creek is just north of Devil's Post Pile and uh, early season, it can be a little bit swift. There used to be a log bridge there, but back in 2017, it kind of bit the dust. Now, if you get there and it looks too sketchy for you, then just backtrack a quarter mile or half mile or so up Creek towards Johnston Meadow and you can cross in Johnston Meadow or I think the usual spot is about halfway there. Just keep an eye out and you'll, you'll see a better spot if you go upstream a bit. Mono Creek, North Fork, Fork is a slightly different story. Mono Creek North Fork runs through Pocket Meadow and that's just north of VVR. The normal crossing can be a little bit swift for people sometimes, especially if you're a little bit uncertain of your footing. So uh, that's easy to avoid. Just go downstream about a quarter or half mile, something like that. And there's a spot where it's a little bit wider and a little bit slower. So you can more easily cross there. Next on the list is Bear Creek. Oftentimes this is the sketchiest crossing on the uh, entire route for people. If you circle around on the Southern side, you can can cross the east and south forks of Bear Creek without too much trouble. And if you cross them separately of the mainstream, first off, you can avoid crossing the mainstream entirely. But second, you avoid crossing a serious enough flow that you're likely to have too many issues. Next, we have Evolution. Evolution Creek is an easy alternate. It's well marked with signs, and I don't think anyone's ever had a problem finding the alternate crossing. But if you do, just head upstream about a half mile, cross it in the meadow. It'll be wider, it'll be shallower, and it'll be a much safer crossing for you. All right, last but not least, South Fork Kings River. This this is probably the most out of your way that you're gonna have to go for any sort of a crossing. But if you get to South Fork Kings River and you're a little bit sketched out by it, if you go upstream about two miles, the, you can cross each of the tributaries separately, walk down a semi-maintained path on the east side of the creek, and that should allow you to get through there even if flows are particularly high. As I said at the start, I don't think that crossing is gonna to be too big of an issue this year, so don't fret too much, but always be cautious, especially if you've got shorter and lighter people in your group, because they're gonna be more susceptible susceptible to high current. Anyway, if you like this video and would like to see more like it, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the bell, hit the subscribe button, hit all that stuff. And if you do, then I'll make sure to put out more videos like this and hopefully see you out there on the trail. All right, later.